Hey everybody and welcome to Chew Stream, where we talk about art and life as an artist. I'm your host, Bobby Chu, and I also have my co-host on here, the amazing Jonathan Hardesty. If you're catching this live, feel free to ask us questions in the chat, but make sure to, that you write the word QUESTION in big capital letters so we can spot them easily. Today's guest is the incredibly talented Thomas Flurity. He has illustrated for such things as Mad Magazine, New York Times, Entertainment Weekly, ESPN, Sports Illustrated, Time Magazine, the Los Angeles Times, and many, many more. He also teaches drawing fundamentals and oil painting on schoolism.com, where he shares his thoughts, techniques, methods on how he draws and paints through his video lessons and supplies assignments for you to try as well. It's always great to hear how someone else thinks and does things differently no matter what level you're at so without further ado here is the incredible thomas flurity please enjoy the stream let me ask the first question here so i look at your illustrations they are beautiful i want to know how reference is kind of incorporated into your workflow do you use reference if so how do you go about using it for me, it's a jumping point. And even more now, it's like um, in the last uh, couple months, I've had this conscious sort of um, workout of taking reference and using it as an inspiration and a place where I'm going to go. And I use it and I'm, I'm pushing it. And it's just, it's it's there to, to feed me, but it's, it, it's not... Um, it's not copying, so I'm 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 training and I'm working out. It's almost like I'm playing scales as a musician. Um, you're not um, you're not going to show those scales or, or you know necessarily, but I'm 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 using this reference to sort of work out and to 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 make it say something that I really wanted to say. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you, Do you think like the the reference gives you? Um like uh, it, like different lighting or different things like weird weirder things that reality or can give you that you might not come up with is that a fair thing to say yeah yeah it definitely does what it def i think what it does for me is let's say i'm doing cowboys i did these cowboys on, on i've been doing this cowboy series i love and, them by the uh, way thank yeah thank you and so i'm i'm i have a i have a reason why i'm doing it uh, first of all i love cowboys i think they're really cool people love cowboys that's the second reason why i'm doing yeah. it <laughs> and so I'm, I'm always trying to think about what do I love? What is it that moves me? And so I just started just doodling and just sort of working out. I'm just training. I'm just I'm playing scales, you know, musical scales. I'm trying to to take my drawing into a certain dimension that it doesn't that it isn't now. And so I'm just playing and I'm warming up and I'm thinking and getting my brain and my hand to sink and move. And I'm trying to slow down and think and and then it's cool. And then there's four of them that aren't cool. And so I'm just, I see this thing in my mind. And so as I, as I, as I move and train and think and develop and grow, uh, some magic happens and then some magic doesn't. But what I'm getting at is there's these cowboys on these horses that uh, I saw this photo and it just knocked me out. It was just, it was just like, that is so cool. And I need to do that. Like, that's the one I want to do today for a warm up. And so that one blew me away, and, and then I add my magic in, or I add my, my thinking of how can I draw this thing freely and beautifully and it, with emotion and passion. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. those are the things that are, that are governing me as I draw, not just can I make this look like a cowboy, but right. you know, I say here, how can I, how can I love this? How can I be like intensely in awe of this, or how can it move me? You know, That's what I'm doing as I look at a photo. It's not like... I'm gonna copy this thing because then it's dead, you know. Yeah, is it is it is it more like a? Um, are you more feeling your way through that, or do you think like consciously, like you'll say like, well, this cowboy is lanky, so I'm gonna make him like skinny and lanky or something, or do you, do you or is that is it something that you're just kind of like a like a musician just sitting down and jamming? Is that is that the way you would 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 describe it? In a, in a sense, um, there's a few restrictions I have. I have an eight by ten piece of paper that only works the best to draw on this 8x10 paper that is uh, Epson heavyweight stock that you print heavy, you know, on your printer. So I have to keep the dimensions in this 8x10 area, and so it's a little tough because uh, sometimes in, a drawing grows as it just grows with size. You make an arm right. or do something, so it's growing. So 
um, I don't even remember what the what the question was, but it's like it's like this thing. Uh, as I as I as I approach it, I have this. I see things, you know, like I'm seeing like this movement and this this con connectivity that's going on with each horse. I'm not just drawing a horse, drawing the second one and drawing the third one. They they they, they there's this flow of rhythm in the whole image, and you don't even realize it as you look at it. And if you say, "Wow, that's awesome," or "That's moving me," it's because there's all these elements that are involved that are that are that I'm consciously aware of. You know, like I'm thinking, mm. and this this arm. Right. Is really big and that's cool and and as i'm drawing this i have this idea that comes in my brain or or i see something in in the horse that moves me and i want to treat that graphic those kinds of things but these are the things as i've been making images for the last 34 years that are uh, actually happening in my head now and and actually as i just study people that i'm inspired by just we can be inspired by people maybe even not as good as us they're just something they did that's really cool you know right. so it's this, if we're humble and we're open, we can be inspired by uh, a seven-year-old's drawing. And it's like, sure. oh, that's cool what they did. I'm going to take that and, and use that or remember that. Those kinds of things. That's awesome. Hey, I just wanted to mention that um, I forgot to put my name on this uh, video. I don't want to confuse anybody that's coming to the stream for the very first time and saw the paintings in the beginning and then is looking at this going, what? Uh, these are my, <laughs> this one's my, uh, my own painting. You know, I'm doing uh, Dice Tatsumi, Robert Kondo's uh, digital painting class, uh, painting with light and color right now. So this is one of the exercise, one of the assignments uh, that I kind of tweaked a little bit. So I'm going to be painting this um, still life of this, um, this little vinyl toy that I have very simply, very quickly. And then I'm going to try to put it into an environment. So that's what's happening. But I did want to ask uh, John as well, how do you use reference, especially, I want to be more specific for, uh, you have a live stream as well, and perhaps you could tell everybody what the address, the URL for that is. And, and uh, you do these streams where, before you did these streams where you would pick apart and analyze uh, textures, right? And when you're yeah. looking at reference, what are you extrapolating from that reference? I would love yeah, to hear so, your side. Yeah. So like, um, so when I'm doing, so it, so that the textural side of things like, well, the, the, tw where I, I do it on Twitch now, it's, uh, usually I do it on Thursdays from, well, I do it every Thursday from two to four Eastern time. It's twitch.tv here. I can put it in the chat too. It's twitch, twitch.tv slash John Hardesty, J O N. And, oh, it won't let me. Nope, can't do it. <laughs> so there you go. But you guys can hear what I'm saying. If you just look me up, you know, you can you can see like on my Instagram and stuff like that too, which is just J O N Hardesty. But but when I'm doing the texture stuff, um, like that to me is like a more of a, a technical exercise. So um, so when I'm analyzing the the references that I'm using for that, what I'm trying to do is figure out how I kind of how to get the essence, like what 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 uh, what makes that texture specific. You know, to uh, like, like what, what makes uh, iron different from aluminum or what makes, you know, jello different from some other, you know, translucent object or something like that. So I'm breaking down, you know, what's happening with the values. I'm breaking down what's happening with the edges. What does the highlight look like? What is the sort of like the breakup pattern between the lights and the darks? You know, how does it, you know, how, how, what do the edges look like and, and how can I, cause I'm trying to internalize that when I do stuff like that, I'm trying to take a bunch of references and then do a study and internalize it so that later on I can, you know, remember that categorization and say, okay, well, you know, iron is, it has a darker local value at the beginning. And then it, you know, it has sort of like a scratchy breakup between the lights and the darks. Typically the surface is scratched and, you know, and, and different things like that. So, you know, I'm trying to break it down and, and, and figure out how to use that so that I can understand sort of the language of texture and then kind of uh, eventually later on relegate that to my subconscious and and just kind of paint later you know and and just know oh yeah well this is what iron is like i'm sure it's some, someday I, and right now it's not like that but someday i'll be like yeah i i, I know how to paint iron but i'm not quite you know <laughs> like how to how to do it you know or how i actually do it but i just do it you know at, at some point i'll get there <laughs> yeah i thought that was really cool because you don't actually you know you're, you're not putting up uh, an iron um you know, kettle, and then you're painting a kettle. You're painting something completely different, like a sphere or something, and right. taking the essence of that texture and applying it to the sphere. So 
it isn't as specific, you know, when you go to paint a, a, an iron sphere, you don't need an, an iron sphere to reference from, in other words. Right, right. And it's, I think you just have to classify it. Like, so I, I break it down to like, you know, is there a unique silhouette or what's happening with the edges? What's the local value, local color? What about the reflectivity and all, you know, you just categorize it. And when you figure out how to categorize it like that, you can, you can regurgitate it later very easily. You know, you can simplify it or change it or, you know, do whatever. It's probably similar. Actually, I, I'm, I'm really curious, Tom, like how you would, how, like how you would talk about, um, you know, cause, cause I feel like when I look at your work and you're taking someone famous or whatever, and you're just basically manipulating the crap out of their facial expressions and their body or whatever. But I'm like, it still looks, ex I mean, it looks dead on. It's like so dead on. And for me, when I look at that, it's like, you're doing the same thing where you're taking this information and you're processing the information about what you're, you're seeing in this particular person, whether it's, you know, Hillary Clinton or whoever. And then you're, Totally. I mean, it, it's, it's like then, he's it, referencing the yeah. essence. Yeah. Yeah. Like that is so amazing to me. So, yeah, if you like it's the same sort of thing that I'm talking about, but in a little bit of a different way. But I'm, I'm curious if you if you could talk about that. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's real. That's interesting. Uh, sometimes I, I feel like um, like I look at. Well, I, I would say this. I think I'm not meaning to put myself in a, in a category by myself because I'm not at all. What I notice is everybody loves Sebastian Kruger, and I love Sebastian Kruger, but everybody wants to be him, and everybody tries to be him, and everybody just knows that, right? So what right. I see is shut that book, shut Sebastian's book, and use it as an amazing inspiration. I think he's the best in the world, but I'm not really blowing everything out at a, at a volume 10. I'm not like, okay, I'm going to blow his nose out. I'm going to blow his ears out. Right. I'm Eyes out. I'm gonna blow his shoulders out. I'm gonna blow everything out, and everything is so loud that you lose the essence. And right. you're showing everybody how loud you can be. I think uh, subtlety and variety and choosing where you're going to uh, blow something out or where you're going to make a statement is way more cool and way more effective. So what I do is I find I find a bunch of different reference on somebody. And I'll find this one shot that really captures them in, in close to what I want to do. And I approach it in a portrait of sense of where I'm just trying to really capture that person without like, so I'm not even thinking caricature. I'm not thinking big nose, big ears, whatever. I'm thinking I need to make this thing really capture them. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to choose a few poise, places to jump off of and a few places to, to uh, make a statement. And so if their nose is long, I make it a little bit longer, or if it's to the side, I'll, I'll kick it to the side a little bit. And then if the gap between the nose to the uh, mouth is, is far, I'll take it far. But I, I, don't, I don't lean on any sort of um, idea of like, well, this is what I do. No, no, no. I'm always like thinking like this person is specific. I can't have a template here. I can't pull out my big nose template and just like right. trace, right? Yeah. So those are things that I do. So if it's... If there's subtleties, and I feel like I'm not even really like sometimes caricaturing it, mm. but because I'm I'm being specific about where I'm going to do it, uh, it's if you took the and if you took the small body off, it it could almost pass as a portrait. Right. But once you put a little deep body on it and you start designing a, a little small body, all of a sudden you have a caricature. But mm. those are the things that like. If you really were to take like George Bush as a cowboy that I did and you remove the body off of it, it's close to being a portrait. But then I mm. blow his ears out, I blow his nose out just a tad or I widen his jaws and yeah. boom, you've got a caricature that isn't like maybe it, hopefully it's not like everybody else's, but it's more me. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, it's that's just uh, uh, I mean, I think it's maybe that's 20 years of sort of developing. I. It took me a long time to figure it out, but maybe that's what has happened over the last 20 years. I, I think your stuff looks like you for sure. Like, I, I don't I don't need to see the signature. I could totally see it was yours, like, from the get-go. And that that's hard. That's very difficult. because And it's natural, which is the cool part. It's not put on, you know, which is, that's awesome, that's, you know. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. You know, and lately, Absolutely. this year, you've been going way more heavily with the uh, the blue pencil which is phenomenal, yeah. just so like yeah. Yeah. iconic to see these images. It's like you know exactly that you know, it came from you. 
Where did that come from? How did that begin? Um, well, I was leaving my studio one night and uh, I, I uh, reached in, I was reaching for a tool in a box because I'm mostly digital a lot and I still do traditional every day, but I was just reaching in this box to grab something. I found this little dinky blue colored pencil and I was like, whoa, this is cool. And um, it was about maybe an inch and a half and I made a line with it and I was like, wow, that looks really cool. So this is like two in the morning and I was like, this is crazy. And I did this line. And I thought, wow, that looks like a, that looks like a comic book. And then I Googled Hellboy and I just was so inspired that I just drew this Hellboy um, image and it's in my book that I have. And it, it actually, it was pretty well received and, and I had a blast doing it. And I actually was just sort of like, uh, started like pencil sculpting with this thing. I was like, I wasn't just drawing, I was just capturing form and and, and it just it just kind of took off, and I just really loved it. And then I would switch over to a brown line, and it just didn't – it wasn't as cool. And then I did this Stan Lee, really big Stan Lee with his head and, and, and you know, his finger pointing, and that was super cool. Like, it was just like – it was just like this um, – this um, sort of like a – it just kept building, you know, and people kept responding. And uh, I don't know. It just sort of like it, – it's sort of an organic thing, like – Everybody's like, oh, I want to have this style, or how do I make a style? It's just like you make a style by, by working every day for 30 years or right. do something. <laughs> like, you don't just yeah. say, ah, oh, do this. You just start do. it comes out. And right. so anyways, with the blue line, it just, it just, it's just something I love to do, and, and that's just kind of where I just keep coming back to it. You know what I mean? Like, like yeah. your creatures, like your creatures, the way you draw, like nobody, I, I've never seen anybody draw like that. And you didn't sit yeah. down and say, I'm going to, this is it. I'm, I've arrived. This is my style. Like it just, you, you, you're inspired, you drink in, you look out, you, you, you take sips of people's work and you, you just, you oh, just eat you're it like, right? Oh, I'm drinking like alcohol. I was like, yeah, maybe, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know what I mean? Like you're absorbing all this stuff in and then it you just keep drawing and it just comes out. Yeah. So it's like this world that you create is who you are. Like and right. it, it it's so beautiful. But like, you know you what, what I mean? I, like I, that. I, that's super nice, Tom. That's super nice. And I'm, I am almost like embarrassed to kind of hear that from you because I respect your stuff so much. But I do want to give uh, the proper kind of credit to because I can pretty much see where all my different influences come from. So like big ones that a big one that nobody really knows or could see very clearly is Sergio Aragones was a big influence to me and still is, you know, just because his humor is universal you know you don't need to know english you don't need to know chinese or whatever you understand the humor that's one chris yeah. sanders peter Desev, steven silver uh yeah. all huge influences um yeah I, I just want to kind of mention that that's awesome but i would say this like like I think you mentioned to me when we were hanging out in the CTN uh, some of your influences, which is really great to hear. But um, somebody said it this way. Uh, this girl was on American Idol and she was singing and one of the judges said, who are your major influences? And she said, I don't know who she said. She said three people. And he goes, that's really awesome. I don't hear them at all in your, in your, in your singing. And so that's cool. Like, I don't see them in your work. And what th that's not a negative. That's an incredible positive that you've, created yourself and they're there but they don't come to the forefront you know what i mean right. like that's that's what that's 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 what we all want right mm -hmm. you yeah. know what i mean Bob? yeah that, yeah that's beautiful well and that's yeah, just exactly. you know that's that's a lot of the philosophy behind schoolism is that you know it doesn't matter what level of art you're at you know just stay curious and yeah and dive into how other people think Right. And yeah. as you start absorbing uh, all this other knowledge from all these other people that might be better than you and might be, you know, maybe the same or m maybe even slightly lower, like what Tom was saying in the beginning, you can be influenced, you can be inspired by anybody. And as you start gathering all this knowledge, it's like you're putting it into this big cauldron, this soup that you call style, yeah. right, you know. Right. Yeah. And if you don't like anything and the soup starts tasting bad, you take that stuff out. 
and you just put yeah. in the stuff that you like. And right, if you right. do it right and you do it honestly and you're just gathering knowledge instead of just trying to learn from one person becoming exactly. a, uh, you know, watered down version of that person, then all of a sudden you get the comments like what John was saying that when he looks at the art, he sees Thomas Flurity. He doesn't see right. any of the influences that he's had in the past. He sees Thomas Flurity. Right, and, exactly. I, I and, would, uh, well, go ahead, Jonathan. Oh, no, no. I was, I was going to say, I, I've been to, just to echo that, Bobby, I've been to like Comic Cons, and it's funny because they'll, they'll like, they'll t ask me, I'll ask these comic artists or whatever, like, oh, what do you do? And they'll show me their work or whatever. And then they'll, and they'll say, what do you do? I'm a fine artist. And then they're, they're like instantly thinking, I'm going to like not like their work or whatever. You know, because I guess they're used to that. And, and I'm always like, this dude, this is so awesome. And I'll be like, how did you do this? I'm like, show me how to do this. You know, and he's like, they're like, they're like, what? You know, and and and, and what I find is that when I get to talk to them, they're super excited about whatever, you know, about Sergeant or about, I mean, we can sit there and talk about Sergeant. Yeah. We could sit there, you know, we could sit there and talk about how, you know, inking characters. And I, I mean, like for me, like it's, there's so much that's, that's cool. And, and, and. To, you have to maintain that mentality, I think, you know, to, you know, to, to get to that point, you have to maintain the mentality where you like, like we were talking about a little bit before the stream where you have to be a constant learner and you have to, you have to be, you know, a student of art in a sense, in the sense where you're like, it's, it's always going to be, if the process is, is where your, where your love is, not the end result, then you're, you're, you're going to, that's going to carry you through all the way, you know, yeah. go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't want to stray no, too far no, from what no, you were going to say. I would say this, like, um, my inspirations um, are, are, are everything from when I was, like, 18. I was looking at Bob Peake, and so he was on the cover of a magazine. He did Every Which Way But Loose, and there was this hand. He drew a fist of Clint Eastwood, and I was so blown away by this fist and what he did with the knuckles and everything, and I was like, wow, that was amazing. So to this day, when I go to draw a hand, I'm not trying to draw a hand. I'm trying to move with expression and draw loosely and have an accident or or exaggerate. But that hand is always in my brain. It's like it's right. like standard of like this is incredible. And then so like as I've been really moved, uh, there's another artist that totally has shaped my work, uh, Michael Ramirez. He's I think he's the best editorial cartoonist in the world. He's really a genius. Um, but I. Um, Every time I draw, I've been studying his work so long. So if he draws an airplane, nobody draws an airplane my, like Michael Ramirez um, or a gun or a shoe. It's just the way that he does it, especially a body or whatever. And so I always ask myself after I do the face, WWMD, what would Michael do, right? right. <laughs> Those things come into my mind, but I'm not copying Michael, but I I have I have him in my back pocket. Like I want to right. get a red light. If it's a r long red light, I'll look at his work or whatever. I'm or or, or um, I think um, uh, Stephen uh, Silver has I'm, I'm just bought his book. He's so blowing me away and changing the way I draw and think. That uh, the same thing. Like there's things that people are saying and talking and doing that if you listen to them and you you hang out with them, they will change the way you do things. And so. Right. These, this is what we want to have inspiration for, not to look like that person, but to gather, to, to sit down and just listen to them. And, and you know what I mean? Like even draw over their work for a while, draw their, draw their work for a while. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like I'm going to, I'm going to buy a book. Um, I think, um, Daniel Ariega was talking about, uh, Ronald Cyril and I'm going to actually buy one of his books and just spend some time with it. You know what I mean? Cause I want something in his work to, 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 change and, and and grab hold of what i'm doing you know sink in that's right. exactly why i'm doing you know all, well that's why i've been doing schoolism classes forever and doing the tonto right. house one right now is to really absorb a little bit more and add it into my stew <laughs> you know like yeah, i say exactly. uh i do want to get to some of these questions if you guys don't yeah, mind we should, yeah. um <laughs> this one from carlos is a really great one in which order should i take uh the courses you know essentials of realism with jonathan hardesty and then uh painting with color and light with tonko house and cody gramstad or vice versa um in that scenario I would pick Jonathan's first because he goes over the fundamentals uh, in such a concrete way. Uh, it's almost like essential 
well, it's called essentials of realism. So I guess that makes <laughs> sense. Um, but everybody's different. You know, that's a common question that we get asked. What do you take first? If you are very, you know, very much like uh, you have no idea about much and you're looking for getting the right start, essentials of realism is a great one. Drawing fundamentals is a really great one with Thomas Flurity, our guest today. Uh, that's what yeah. I would recommend. Um, but there, there are a ton of questions. So, if it's cool, we'll just move on to one where we can, you know, all kind of dive in. Okay. So, yeah, let's, see. Uh, let's see. You want to pick one, John? Yeah. Yeah. Let me. Um. Let's see. Uh. Let's see. Yeah, let me look through. Uh. Well, here's here's a simple one from Carlos. Do all professional artists need to learn uh, to draw from their shoulders? Is this an exclusive rule for figure drawing? I mean, I would say. I would say, you know, uh, it, it, it depends on what you're doing. You know, if you're working on an 8 by 10 sheet, Tom, do you, you say, would you say you still draw from your shoulder or do you kind of <laughs> reform it? Yeah, absolutely. In my drawing class, or as I teach drawing to kids and people, I say, there's, and Bobby's done this wonderfully as well uh, in some of his demos, uh, there's a lot of ways to hold your pencil. And if you hold your pencil like you're writing a love letter to grandma, Right. Uh, that's not cool. That's not cool. <laughs> right, that's, right. A, that's a place if I'm doing an eye or I need an mm. exact touch. right, right. Yeah. But I, I'm drawing from my arm, from my shoulder. I'm, 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 I want expressive lines and mm -hmm. I want movement and and you know what I mean. That, so yeah. yeah, I would say I'm from, no matter what the size is, I'm always drawing from uh, from my arm and my shoulder. But there and is no absolute uh, rule. Carlos yeah. as well you know if you're drawing with a mechanical pencil you're probably using a lot more of your wrist yeah and it just really just depends on which kinds of methods you're doing but uh learn them all a lot that's the a lot of people part. see the realism that I'm doing and they think that I would be holding it like I've, I've had a lot of like people have been surprised when they watch me draw because I'll actually flip it like if the charcoal the pencil around to where I'm holding it not um trying to say like uh like flat to my palm do you know what i mean like and i'm grabbing it with my like pointed straight up in the air if i was holding my pencil in my hand straight out you know what i mean that's kind of hard to explain but but not over like i'm writing i take it actually out from behind my thumb and put it in the front and hold it straight up and down and use it that way i i'm often using it like that and using my whole arm and and, and so yeah I, I even for me like even when i'm doing more detailed passages and things like that i still hold it like that it just is it, it's it's it, like you can use your arm, it's better, and uh, yeah, I, I agree. That's awesome. Okay, let's see. Let's do another one. Uh, oh, we'll do a quick uh, one. Um, yeah, go ahead. You know, Katie is asking. Sorry, it's off topic, Bobby, but exactly when will Craig Mullins' course go live so I don't miss it? Oh my goodness! Can we talk about Craig Mullins for a second? Because this yeah. is kind of like a dream come true, and I, I've been feeling like I've been living in a dream for the past month or so, working with Craig Mullins on his class, on his, you know, lessons, assignments, online class on schoolism. Holy smokes! Uh, I know it's awesome. Yeah, the internet is holding its breath. It's like the the idol of <laughs> idols, really. Yeah. My goodness, uh, <laughs> when does it go live? I don't know. We're aiming for this month, which is incredible. So, but you know, with a lot of these very very high level artists, they are so busy. Yeah. So I would like to say yeah this month, but I don't know. Let's go on to another simple question here. Um, so they were talking about, I, I want to bring up Mexico because there's a lot of uh, chatter in the, in the stream about Mexico. We are, schoolism is coming to Mexico. What? Awesome. Uh, this one is a little bit different. So we are helping Imagination Workshop um, do a workshop in Mexico. So this isn't, necessarily this isn't like a an official official schoolism uh workshop but we are helping them by bringing uh some really wonderful uh schoolism speakers to the event crash mcquery which you know he uh worked on the mummy that's coming out this weekend he's also worked oh, cool. on you know things like he designed some dinosaurs for this movie called jurassic park you know, he has uh, worked on this thing called Terminator 2. He's worked on, you know, he designed um, 
the a lot of the Pirates of the Caribbean, namely, um, what's his name? Something Jones, the the octopus looking guy. It's just so amazing. I forget. Oh yeah, ah, oh, he's cool. I'm an idiot. I on a normal day I would totally remember the name, but um, I can't remember either. I can't remember. That. Dang it! I know. <laughs> yeah, something something locker. You know. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll I know. just it's be gonna bug. Yeah, I know. <laughs> okay, never mind. Okay, so yeah, Victoria Ying, Nathan Falks, Luke de Marchelier. Holy smokes, that's gonna be a, incredible. And there's only 50 tickets available. Not my fault. You know, again, this is uh, the imagination imagination workshop. They're the ones organizing it. We're helping out. So definitely get your fingers on the trigger. June 15th is when the uh, tickets will go on sale. So look out for it. It's only 50 tickets. Um, yeah, let's go on to a uh, proper question now that we can all kind of dive into. Um, There's a good one here. Um, oh, my Buddha asked the question. <laughs> right on, right on. <laughs> um, uh, I currently don't work or go to school. I draw or study a minimum of five hours a day. Is that enough? Currently studying Fundamentals of Light with Sam Nielsen. Yeah, I mean... I, this question that we get, we get this a lot about, you know, how much time do you need to spend and things like that. It varies from person to person, but the main thing that I would say is to make sure that you are taking the time to practice the right things and focus on the right things. Like make sure you're talking to professionals and asking them what is the most important thing. Cause you know, I like, I remember when I first started playing guitar and I, I don't play guitar the greatest, but I'm saying, but I, I started to take it seriously later on. And then didn't have enough time. But 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 at first I would just sit down and and sort of like, OK, I'm just going to sit down and play something, you know, just whatever. I'm just going to sit down and kind of noodle around and, and play whatever. And that wasn't very helpful for me, you know, to to just yeah. sit down and play the same thing that I had played that whole week, you know. And so you have to have a plan of action. You have to understand what's required to get you to that point that you want to get to, you know, and and you have to sort of like like uh make something concrete so like when you hear tom saying about like you know doing all these drawings to sort of get the essence of of what you know he, he's doing he's talking about sort of doing like you know gestures and also just you know uh, getting getting the feel for it by you know sketching out the rhythms and the movements or whatever and so you have to break it down okay well it, how do i practice that how do i do that okay i can grab images and but i really want to focus on this 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 and this to to grow in this skill set or i want to focus here on values and I want to do a value study or whatever. So I think being smart about how you're doing it and making sure you're practicing the right things and what is important, I think is, is key. I don't know if you guys want to sound off on that too. I think he's yeah. doing two things, right? Well, he's probably doing many things, right? But two things I want to point out is that he's saying a minimum of five hours a day, which means consistently, right? Oh, my Buddha is painting or drawing every day. That is super important, the consistency. The other part to it is that he is doing or she is doing the quickest way possible, which is learning how somebody else does stuff, you mm -hmm. know, that took them years to develop and is just teaching. Like, Tom, you, you know, you were saying you've been developing your style for like 35 years. And right. you can right. learn from right. him and it won't take 35 years. If you keep doing that. That's exactly. Yeah, every month you'll be leveling up, and that's that's the whole entire point. Yeah, and think about Here's that, guys. A, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Tom. Go ahead. Here's a, one thing I love about you, Bobby, uh, that I've noticed, and it's inspired me, uh, especially this year, is I noticed you're – you you know you're a professional you're a pro you know you you know what you're doing and yet you're you're humble you're like you're always studying you're always taking your own classes you know like you know yeah. what I mean like you're <laughs> you're right now you know you're studying with uh you know with dice and and uh and, and it's like you you're always a student and and so it's that inspired me this year so I said I'm going to. Be, uh, I'm gonna take the initiative, and I'm gonna definitely do something this year to get better. And um, so, uh, you know, I've, I've been watching some of the classes at Schoolism as well, and I bought uh, uh, Stephen Silver's book and been working through that and being aggressive with that. But then I also uh, I've been studying with this painter here in Minneapolis, Joe Paquette, who's uh, a, he's a beast. He's just off the charts, and he's a rock star in the clean air world. He's 
really unbelievable. And um, so I went and did a, a workshop with him this last weekend. Oh, and it felt awesome. really small, really small, really dumb, really stupid, blah, 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 right? But it's like, it's like you, need, you need to feel broken. You need to feel, yeah. you, you like have a mirror put up to you and say, you don't know this. And, right, and right. when you when you are broken and you're you feel weak, you're only gonna get better. And I I want to keep coming back, and I'm gonna go back and study with him more because I realize he knows things I don't know. I can't do that. And so my goal is to be able to go out and handle a landscape and just nail it, but but know what I'm doing. And so this whole right. idea of like being aggressive with like uh, studying and spending time and 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 the other thing that Jonathan you brought up which is fantastic is you want to study the right things you don't want to uh, just go in your own little just draw uh, for five hours wrongly you want to draw for five hours correctly right. and so it's like it's like as I as I, I uh, I've seen people who have maybe 20 30 years and they say uh, okay, I'm going to now do oils, but they don't go study with someone. Like, what are you talking about? Like, you don't know oils. You need to go study with someone. You, you know, acrylics, you know, this and that, but please go, go save yourself some time and don't make, uh, mistakes for 50 years or 20 years. Go study with someone. And, right. and that's what I would say to him is, is, uh, go, if you have someone in your town, go apprentice with them, go study with them, go into their studio, go with schoolism, just keep absorbing, keep learning. And study with great people. That's how. That's what you're doing, Bobby. That's what I do. And Jonathan, I think you do the same thing. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm taking. I'm taking the the um the Tonko House class too. I'm I, I'm at the beginning of it, but I'm 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 taking oh, it too. Man. I love it. That I would love to see your assignments because I'm sure you would rock at it. But oh, this is exactly. Yeah, but you know, it's different. It's different. I feel like Tom because like you know they're they're using lassos yeah, to like paint yeah. stuff and and so. I did. I painted one recently outside of my kids with at the at the uh, playing on this playground thing, and I was doing it, and I was like, man, I like I don't like what I did at all, you know. But mm. it, but it's so different than than what I've normally done. That it, like you said, Tom, it's like this is so awesome because I would never approach it this way. So this is pushing me in a way, yeah. and it and it's gro- it's growing me in a way. Even just that you know the couple little exercises I've done, it's like. I'm like already like, yes, this is, I love this. I, I, you know, and, and I feel like I, you know, I, I, I used to get like discouraged when I would see another artist work and they were like so much better. And I was like, that's so unachievable, but I don't feel like that anymore because I, I just, because I'm like, that's awesome. Like I need to learn from that. Like, like you said, Tom, just, just like it, it's, it's inspiring now because you know, at a certain point, you know, you're like, Okay. Yes. There's no way in the world by the end of when I'm dead that I'm gonna know be be able to do everything well, you know. <laughs> and right. so you come to grips with that, and then you just start to say, okay, well now let's just let's just move forward, learning as much as I can, you know. And and Absolutely. and so yeah, and you just you have fun doing it. I yeah, I just love the process. Like the process is so is the fun part to me. I don't I don't like people always ask me, well, do you do you ever feel sad selling your paintings or whatever? I'm like, no. I'm like, get it out of my house, you know, because. Yeah. Once it's done, I'm like, I don't give a crap about it. And and to be honest, like after a week passes, I'm like, I don't like that. Yeah, there's this and this wrong. Or I just get it out before I can critique right. it too much. You know. <laughs> yeah. So it's the process that's fun. I was gonna say something too that's important. I think you guys know this, and I think some people know it. Maybe they, some people don't. But there's a there's a dip. So let's just say you're um, you you know how to do you know A B C D. You know how to do it. But then you go and study with somebody who's better and somebody who uh, knows things you don't. And and at least for me, uh, there's a di- there's a dip. There's a there's a learning curve where the dip is. Um, I then go down. I go down for mm-hmm. a couple of days, a week, a couple of months. But then I rise. I rise higher right. in right. the next in the next uh, year, next six months. All of a sudden, I'm at a completely different level. So I was at this plateau. I, I go study with someone. I feel crappy. I feel whatever. I'm uh, I'm exposed, you know, mm-hmm. uh, that I that I don't know something, and then I dip down and I feel right. discouraged, whatever. But I fight. I keep pressing, I, and then I apply, and it starts sinking right. in. And then all of a sudden, you just rise, and you're at a different level. So that's like the that's like normal. That's like the journey of right. of, of learning. And and if we acknowledge the fact that we're only going to be so good. And, and I'm going to speak for myself. I'm not, not going to be a household name in a thousand years at all. That, that you know, Rembrandt, uh, Bouguereau, these guys are just 
unbelievable. So right. it's okay. Right, keep, right. Keep keep growing. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Be right. awesome. Study. You know that kind of. Stuff. I don't. I don't know so, though, Tom. I, I like. I definitely feel like when I, I feel the same as you. I'm like. I'm not, I know he's gonna give a crap about my stuff later on, but I don't know about you. I think yours. I think. I think you might be a household name. I think. You know, you and Bobby both. I. I. I think so. I think there's definitely a a, a really strong possibility of that. <laughs> well, let me let me next just uh let me tell you something about like the origins of schoolism or tell everybody the origins of schoolism. Uh, one of the biggest reasons of creating schoolism is a very honest reason but it's a very selfish reason and that was for me to learn you know (laughs) i had the things that i could teach great so that gives me an excuse to ask other people to teach and then do i watch their lessons do i do their assignments yes right now somebody was asking is Am I taking a self-taught version of the class or the critiqued version? Sometimes I do self-taught, like I did with Tom's. Um, Sometimes I do critiqued versions where I don't use my real name. And I'm in there with you guys doing the assignments and everything. (laughs) And it's frustrating. It's it's sometimes almost like... uh, annoys me you know because why because i'm getting treated like everybody else i'm not as used to that you know what i mean (laughs) but that's exactly what i want and that's what exactly what you should want if you you know want to be on the same pursuit as me of just this journey to try to go as far as you can right it's just be used to stinking for a while which right. is the kind of mental preparation I do for every class. It's like, okay, I'm going to sure, suck sure. for like two months. That's okay. <laughs> right. Let's do this. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, but the other thing is that we created schoolism not because, like, uh, not because that's solely what we want to do. You know, we're all working professionals. We've all had successful careers before schoolism and still have successful careers. We are teaching because we want to, you know, we want to affect the world in a positive way. And for me, I want to create a moment in time that will go down in art history, John, that people will remember for years to come this wonderful moment in time where many of the best artists in the world came to share what they know in that's true yeah yeah an that's accessible true. and affordable way it's yeah. i think that's true yeah it's true yeah and that's a that's a, to me that's almost i i feel like that's a better legacy anyways i'd, I'd rather leave that one you know yeah, what I mean? right Absolutely. <laughs> yeah you work yeah. on cool movies and stuff and yeah you get the fans and people go oh i love what you did on that movie or or game or gallery show or whatever but when you teach somebody, you're affecting their lives, you know, right. and the emails and, you know, meeting everybody in person and stuff like that and hearing their stories and not just how you affected their life. But if you affect somebody in a positive way, perhaps now they can help to support their whole family. So now you've affected right. their lives as well. Right. It's exactly. the most humbling, the most positive thing that you can do on, uh, you know, with your time on this earth. It's awesome. It's awesome. Guys- can I ask a, uh, answer a question here? This oh, one's yeah, kind of sure. cool. Um, do you guys ever feel intimidated by any of your fellow artists and their skill? Yeah, right now, that... right now with these two. I was going to say the same thing. Yes, I'm in, I'm in this chat with two people that are most Shh. certainly better than me. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, listen, but... listen. No, no, <laughs> seriously. Um, if, if anybody, if any artist in the world says to the first question, do you guys ever feel intimidated by any of your fellow artists and their skill? And they, and they say no, they're lying. And, right. and you don't want to study with them because that's, <laughs> that's ridiculous. Um, feeling, first of all, humility isn't that you just all of a sudden put it on and say, I'm going to be humble. Humility is like acknowledging the facts. And it's right. like mm. that guy is unbelievable. Right. And, or that Girl, that girl is incredible. like I look at Carla Ortiz's work, and I'm like, oh my! I know gosh, she's this girl is crazy, unbelievable. Mm-hmm. And like yeah. she just shows me, I'm like, oh my gosh! And and yet when I compare myself, uh, and if I find myself depressed, it's because I am comparing myself. Right. And so if I feel depressed, I ask myself, 
wait a second, I just compared myself. That sucks. I'm not going to compare myself because it says uh, 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 um, uh, comparison is the thief of joy. I just saw somebody post that. So when you have joy and you're creating, you're not comparing. When I'm at my easel and I'm thinking about Jeremy Lipking, I'm depressed, right? right? Because I'm comparing myself. Right. I'm comparing myself. Even Jonathan, the stuff you're doing, it's like I just – I just, I, I see something and I'm like, I find myself feeling a negative and I'm like, no, 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 he's awesome. He's doing this. This is beautiful. And I have to remove myself and say, I just want to learn and be awesome and grow. Not so that somebody praises me because it's, I, my time is so short here. I just right. want to, it's a world of, of, of just growing. And so I just, I have to be consciously aware that I don't compare and I use, use this awesomeness to just. To, to let it be fuel and sort of air under my wings and try to grow and just try to grow and, and just walking with the reality that I'm only going to be so good at the end of my life and that's okay. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you can't be better than everybody. You're ne never going to be Michael Jordan. You're, it's just not going to happen. You're not going to be Rembrandt. But you can, you can be yourself and you can be awesome and you can just continue to grow. And so, you know, that's what I would say uh, about feeling intimidated. And then the other question is, is that stage over now? The answer is absolutely no. It will never be over. Right, and if, right. it, if you think it is over, and you think it is over, then then that's a scary place. You're actually in self deception. You think you've arrived. You never right. arrived. Mm -hmm. And right. just walk light. Walk in that light. Be that kind of an artist. I haven't arrived. I never will. And these are my buddies. I want to be awesome. Right. With them. Like I want to tell them how awesome they are. So that's that's the other thing about humility is tell people how awesome they are. Don't don't just try to get uh, uh, responses from people, tell them how awesome they are. So those are the things that I think about when I look on online. Or, one last thing, sorry. When I look online and I find myself um, getting depressed or discouraged, I shut off, I, shut, I, I don't go online for a while and I just develop and grow on my, for a little bit on my own. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's a great for sure. tip. That's that's uh, everything you're saying is is dead on, man. I th I think it's dead on. You know, I think, yeah, I, yeah. You know, it's it's. I think surround yourself with people that are that are going to kind of have that mentality as well. Cause I, and think of, that's great about schoolism is I have not, you know, and I don't think Bobby would uh, like the way you function, Bobby. You would even attract someone who is like this. But I haven't seen anyone that has been like I am the master. All of you will learn from me. Like it it has not been like that. Everybody is truly skilled and and i think because they're truly skilled they're they're humble and the thing is is like guys you may hear us like gushing about each other and things like that but the thing about it is this and you guys all know this the reason we do that is because this is like it's freaking hard to be an artist like it, it's really hard and no, there's not a lot of people that kind of get it like in your average daily life that get what the sweat and the blood and that that you have you know that you have to expend to to get to that point and and, you know, and so when you have other people who have done that sort of thing and are still doing it, like you, it's, it's very hard to be like, to be, uh, down on someone else because you just know how hard it is, you know? And so, um, so yeah, so, you know, it's, it's surround yourself with people that are going <clears> to <throat> have that mentality because you're all going to build each other up that way and get a, get a group. And, and that's where schoolism, it, it, it's, it's fantastic that way. It's, I, I've, I, especially in the fine art world, I've seen a lot of people, with that really it's an insecurity but it's like i have the answers i remember in some classes people even saying that you know oh well like th that guy was just you know glenn keen he's just like drew cartoons or whatever like people would actually say stuff like that or say like you know and, and i would just be like man like i don't even know what to say to you like <laughs> if, like if you're you know if you're saying land decker's work because he's an illustrator is less than and then yeah, I, I don't I don't know what to say i don't even know we, we don't have any common ground at all like i don't even know what you're talking about you know so you know, and I've had people say things like that to me. And so it's it's just, you know, so it's funny. I mean, yeah, just surround yourself with people that are going to have that same mentality of growth and and, and all that. But I, I did want to answer this one question, too. Uh, I saw this one. Come, this is kind of close to my heart. Um, Mr. Epic said, I'm colorblind, but I want to get better in art. And I've been told I have the skills, but I can't see colors. Any ideas how I can get around this? So my son is colorblind, too. And he's been huh. t like getting interested in in drawing and stuff like that he he's saying now he wants to be a chef we'll see but but <laughs> but but um but you know i i actually saw a painter the reason i wanted to answer this because i saw a painter uh in a show 
that my work was in. And I went up, I was like, this is a really interesting landscape. It was almost like it was a very like tonal landscape. And it like um, it had like the oranges and the greens were like it was really interesting, actually. And that guy was colorblind. And uh, and and so he had done all his landscapes and all his work basically the way that he saw it. So when he looked out into like a he, this was like a whole uh, like a really dense forest scene and this whole dense forest scene he painted in these tonal like, you know, it was mostly it was, it was like a like a it, it almost was like monochromatic. But it was it, but it was so interesting because I could see the way that he saw, you know, I could totally see the way he saw. And and um, and, and now I feel like that even gives me insight into how my son sees the world. So I, I what I would say is, you know, everybody sees color a little bit differently. You know, and and so people may not even know that you're colorblind later on, you know, but they might be like, oh, yeah, that guy, he does like stuff that's like almost like monochromatic, you know, and that that might that would end up being your style or your thing, you know, so I I say go for it. That's awesome. Yeah, Yeah, I know a few people that are colorblind and they're successful artists. One is extremely successful, paints with color all the time and uh, nobody knows. That's awesome. Who is that? Who is that? Uh, I I don't think I should say, but oh, um, okay, gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. if you knew, you'd be like, "Holy smokes, no way!" Well, that's fantastic. <laughs> so, th- see, that's fantastic. So I even so like based on him not saying that, that means I would even know who he's talking about. So that's mm-hmm. that's that's fantastic. See, that's so cool. That's really cool. Yeah, one of my artistic heroes, for sure. That's that's um, great. One thing, you know, we've been talking about the schoolism classes and things like that, but I did want to, you know, for anybody that is interested in the opportunity to, you know, learn and see, see how other people do stuff. You know, right now is actually the best time because we do have a sale going on right now. Uh, if you go to schoolism.com, you can see that if you type in the word bloom, like flowers blooming, uh, into the discount code uh, when you when you sign up for a subscription. The subscription is so affordable, it's $15 a month, but right now you can get one third off, $10 a month uh, for the first six months of your subscription. So definitely jump on it if you, you know, if you are interested. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And listen, like like Tom was saying, I, like Tom's class is on my list too, like, I can't look at your work and be like, I'm like, I got to get into his head. Like guys, like if you can take a class 34 years, he said, Oh my gosh. Like that, like to be able to take the class for like such a cheap amount of money, like the subscription mode, like someone who's literally condensing 34 years of insane work since the 80s and like since the early 80s. i mean like yeah like that's i was born in 1980 and i'm like and i'm just like this is this is such a like yeah you know, i mean like for, to be able to take that class like you know everybody can you know can see his work it's really good right but it's not just him being like you know oh yeah here just watch me draw and paint for a little bit you know it's it's getting inside his head understanding what he what he thinks and what he you know uh, what, what, all the discoveries he's made, like that is like, so it's worth like, it's worth so much, so, so much. So I would encourage everybody, like, uh, like I said, I got the Tonko house class. I got like a list. I'm going through things. Tom's is on your stuff is on my list for sure, man. Um, I nice. want your, I want your drawing skills. I want, <laughs> I want the, and painting skills, dude. I'm like, I, I there's, yeah, yeah. Uh, I know we can do it on this stream, but there's, uh, there's, I want to spend some time talking about painting with you at some point because your paintings are sick dude sick uh, <laughs> I feel the same you, man. if I could Thanks, do man. a little housekeeping uh, answer this question about the Berlin workshop which is happening this weekend today is pretty much the last day that you can uh, buy tickets uh, or maybe not even. Um, but anyways, if you are going to the schoolism workshop because somebody's asking in Berlin, uh, is there anything that they should do before then? Um, the things that I would do, research the different uh, speakers that will be speaking because if you get the opportunity, which you will get the opportunity to talk with them and hang out with them, and that's one of the great things about these workshops is that you get to actually hang out with these uh, instructors and talk with them and everything, uh, then you'll have more stuff to talk about with them. And when they know that you know about them, uh, people tend to be more engaging. Yeah, that's true. Right, right. Now, let's go on to the next question. This one's a really good one. Nathan Chan, he asks, 
Can you explain your process when you're trying and uh, trying to absorb other artists' work? How far do you take it? How do you go about doing it? Yeah, I can I can tell you like a quick thing that I do. Um, one of the things I like to do is I, I like to do master copies. So I'll do I'll try to get it exactly like not. I, like I try to do, I try to do it the way that they would have done it. I try to dissect, and sometimes you know what that is when it's a it's an artist that's still alive. You you'll know their process, and you can kind of go through the same process. And sometimes you're in a schoolism class, they're telling you exactly how to do it, and you're doing it. But but when you just have a, a work of art and you're trying to absorb something, like I try to get inside the artist's head and see, um, like I, I'll look and say, okay, it looks like there's a wash first, and maybe then they went over. It. And I try to do it in the same way, and I'll try to get it as exact as possible. But then immediately after that, I'll do sort of a master copy but in a different sense i'll take my own subject matter my own thing and i'll try to make it look like they did it not, and i know i'm not going to get there you know because it, it's always going to look like a poor version of whatever person i'm studying but but i always i always try to that that next step is super important like to take because then you understand whether you've you've or whether you've understood them then you get a real good feel for whether you've understood them because if you can sort of you know, uh, process all the information that you've got from that master copy and then kind of regurgitate it on your own, in your own work, then I'll try to do that as, uh, and make it look like they did it. But then, then I'll step back from that later and say, okay, now which parts of that do I want to incorporate into my work and which parts do I want to, you know, sort of leave out. But that, that's, I think that, that doing a master copy and then using that master copy information for your own work right after that, I think is, is really important. Tom, you were talking about uh, Steven Silver's book. How are you kind of studying that and absorbing it or what's the best way yeah, yeah it's 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 great um it, i mean it's an unbelievable book and, and he's such a passionate teacher i mean we, we we when we talk we're like two italian dudes using hand gestures the whole time and we're like on skype and we're just like so <laughs> like we're like we like we crouch over and we talk and our hands are flying and he's, he's hilarious so uh to buy his book was a real honor and um <clears throat> As I um, as I look at it, I'm um, I'm just thinking, and I'm I'm doing uh, note taking, and I'm I'm copying. I'm I'm making my hand move in the same way that he's doing things, and I'm thinking about shapes, and I'm 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 just um, sometimes if I read something, I'll write it as a note uh, because as I write it, it it it, uh, it it fits in my brain better, and yeah. uh, don't read it and forget it. Um, I might I might uh, shoot a screen snap of it, and as opposed to going on social media, and I'm you know whatever I'm doing, uh, waiting at the bank, I'll uh, read that note and re get that back in my in my head. So those are the things I'm doing, and I take his book with me everywhere I go. So um, I was at a wedding uh, last night or a rehearsal dinner, and I just I was waiting, and I pulled it out and looked, just grabbed the page and and looked at it. And so it's it's those, and it, it would be easy to say, oh, I know that, but but. I don't do that. I, I, I don't. I might know something, but I want to hear what he's saying. It's like Jonathan said. I want to. I want to hear Stephen's thoughts. So, right. Um, I'm, I'm always approaching it in a in a humble way of teach me, master, teach me. I think you know. I mean, it's just that. Um, so I'm taking mental notes, and I'm also uh, might uh, I might um, draw exactly as they did, just for a moment, um, a minute or five minutes, just to say. Oh, I get it. I'm seeing it. That kind of a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I was taking the Tonko House uh, painting class and kind of adjusting their assignment a little bit to to incorporate this other person that I've been just kind of gobbling up, which is uh, Frederick Remington. Uh, he did this yeah, painting awesome. of this beautiful wolf at night, and if you look for his uh, images, you'll see where this image that I did came from because he um here let me let me actually I know exact I know exactly which you one know which well he has he has a he has a couple I, I think but he has a bunch at night but I think I know exactly which one yeah this about. one you'll be like oh man okay I could see it you're not impressive at all uh no no <laughs> let no, me no. show you <laughs> so this is so I combined the Tonko House assignment with this uh image you know so i'm trying to extrapolate information that i want to learn from this painting and i'm mixing it with lessons from uh, tonko house so you're applying the knowledge to your own thing to your own project and that's the best way to really absorb that knowledge that's awesome. i feel yeah that's yeah that that's cool 
that's a, that's a great payment. There's a great question that I would love to hear, uh, if possible. Yeah, sure. I don't mean to change the subject. This is a great question. Bobby told us about his daily routine, but what about Jonathan and, and myself? Are they morning persons? When do they find time to practice? Whatever. I would be really curious to hear because it's like seven. I've been reading the another thing I did was I read the seven secrets of highly successful people this year, and I made an effort to say they succeeded. What are they doing? So it's just like that. I'd love to hear Jonathan and then Bobby if you could weigh in as well. What are your uh, give me if you can tell me a, a little bit about how you handle and schedule your days and structure your days? Yeah, sure, sure. Oh, yeah, I, that, by the way, that's cool. I'm looking at that wolf. That wolf. Just oh yeah, up. yeah. The, that wolf one's awesome, isn't it? That's so good. Um, yeah, for me, like I, I have to. So I've got three kids, and and uh, they're all under seven. So like I have a seven year old, five year old, and then a nine month old. So I really, <laughs> I really got to schedule it, you know. And so for. For me, like what I'll do is like I have like a schedule, like I have like typical things, you know, I have to I have to wake up and then I get the kids breakfast and stuff like that. And and then so I have like all that scheduled out, but I have to actually go and I just re I just redid my schedule. I'm going to be put, implementing it next week. Actually, not next week because I'm going to be at the Imaginism house next week. But but the week after where um, I take stock of like what I need to get better at, which is <laughs> which is a big list. But like but uh, I will. I, one of the things I saw, um, th this band, uh, Dream Theater, if you guys know Dream Theater, um, John Petrucci, a long time ago, this is like, this must have been like in the early 90s or something, he had like a guitar video, and, and I was so, he's so good, and he had, he had, he had gone to, I think he went to like Juilliard or something, and, but he said he would organize his practice sessions, and he would, he would say, okay, 15 minutes of this type of whatever, picking for guitar, and this type of thing, and then scales for this long, and, and he had a real strategy for how he would, get better in certain areas and, and sort of design it. So I'm always doing that. I'm always, and sometimes, you know, things come up and you can't do it or whatever, but I like to plan out my entire week and say, okay, yeah. you know, th from, you know, I have to do, you know, answer students from this time to this time. And then from this time to this time, I'll do like gesture drawings. And then, you know, from this time to this time, I'll do this. Like, that's what I've got on my schedule now. I've got like, cause I need to get so much better at, at gesture drawings and, and things like that. So I'm, I'm working on that and I'm going through Michael Hampton's, book and I'm going through Scott Robertson's books on perspective at certain days of the week too. And like a lot of the imaginative awesome. side and stuff like that, I'm, I'm, but you I'm schedule that in, in you that schedule area. in the time, like you actually schedule in time to go over this book, that book. Yeah. Or do I you try look to because... for free time in between stuff? Well, I have to do that too. So I schedule it and then because of, you know, family stuff or whatever, sometimes it gets disturbed, but I like to have the schedule there so that I can kind of fall back on it. But, you know, more often than not, like, you know, later on at night, I'll be like, okay, everybody's going to bed. I'm like, I gotta, I'm going to stay up and do this or I'll wake up early and I'll, I'll do something like that. But, but I do want to get out and start doing, um, I haven't been doing landscapes as much often as much recently. So I want to get back out and start doing them. And so like now Friday mornings, I, I called my friend, I was like, Hey, He's a hiker and he's he's like he's like a budding artist too. And I was like, hey, you want to go do some painting on Friday mornings? He's like, yeah, let's do it. And I said, awesome. okay, I'll do my stream with Bobby and then we'll go painting. And he's like, okay, yeah, so, that's that's so that's tough. how I do it. You know, that's tough, especially because you have three kids. But you know what? I'm always curious about how people kind of manage their time with kids. Now let's go to Tom Flurity, who actually beats you in number of kids. You have five daughters. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. How do you Dude, deal with awesome. your time? Because you are prolific with how much art that you know yeah. you create. Yeah, I just ignore them. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> well, sometimes that is a very good strategy. It works. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. They, uh, they're, they're all they're all pretty much grown up now. Okay, so uh, they're 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 eight, 19 and above. So gotcha. Uh, so they, they, it's a lot less maintenance, but um, but the, you it's been you a joy. I helped to raise them, you know. So yeah. like, how was it like before when I was really busy then? Huge juggle. I, I'm home every day, so uh, we'd always have lunch, uh, do the dishes after lunch. You know, like always right. trying to help out. My wife right. homeschooled them. She was home every day, taking yeah. care of them. Uh, you just have to t you have to run to do the things that need to be done and come back and just stay on the table. Right. Uh, and then there's jobs there's jobs that are hot and tight and I can't get away. And so mm -hmm. my wife might just have to deal with the pressures in that day of being without me. And so because that's now uh, post, 
um, it was a, an amazing joy uh, being being there for their lives and, and pouring myself into them when I can as much as possible. Uh, late nights, extremely late nights, four hours yeah. of sleep. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? And um, and you know uh, you know un unfortunate where um, all of a sudden somebody throws up and my whole deadline is really in trouble now because that's all right. Of sick that's kid right. and, mm, and yeah. uh, yet you know um, I don't miss deadlines. So there's just things that were give and take, but. Um, right. Try to make the most important uh, things that happen in their lives where if there was a, 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 a baseball game, I'm trying to be there or a gymnastics event on a Saturday or whatever. Yeah. But you just you just life art gets done and life gets done around everything. So it's like it's basically right. art gets done around life. I put life first. And so it's like art gets done around life and then art has to happen uh, and be immovable on certain days and certain moments. Right. And that it's just really in this balance. And so but but more so in the last um, uh, three or four years, I've had a since everybody's grown up, there's been a real conscious effort to develop my own work. And I think that's where I've really grown the most. Uh, I, st I still do work for other people, but I made a conscious effort to be really aggressive with my time and uh, draw and develop and grow as much as possible. So so all my warm ups, everything I'm doing is I go to bed earlier, earlier than I used to. Um, and, um, and I help my wife up in the morning, get out the door and then, um, she works and then I, uh, devote, uh, a couple hours to just developing and drawing and doing something that I'm going to maybe post, maybe not, but I want to just have fresh, clear mind, really, uh, maybe it's going to be a great day of drawing. Maybe it's going to be a struggle, but I'm fresh. So I do a couple hours of just developing and growing and, and, and trying to draw in a certain way. That's what all the blue line stuff is and then i post it and, and uh, sort of sort of shape my i'm branding myself in one sense and so um uh, i'm building something and so that is pretty much devoted the first few hours are devoted to uh that and then i answer i might look at emails and stuff like that anything hot uh that i have to address but i try not to get distracted i don't look at social media I, that's my precious time of being myself and growing and developing and so then i uh somewhere around 11 maybe i uh I, I get on things that are hot or need to be touched and do those things and and move throughout the day and then if i get distracted and all of a sudden there's this dog that's blowing my mind i might stop working if i can and right that dog <laughs> because this dog this cowboy is just blowing me away and then i might only have time to draw for an hour uh, and then I set that aside, but I'm set up for the next day. And then that evening, if I have a moment, I'm watching a TV show that I don't that I'm bored with, that I don't really want to be, but I'm with my family. I'll take it upstairs and just can try to finish that so that I can post it in the morning. And so then I'm also trying to have a rhythm where I'm not going to post every day, and so people hate me and hate my work after a while. But I'm trying to post. Um, like take a few days off from social media and a few days where I'm not posting so that when I post again, it's fresh and people are like, oh, wow, cool. You know what I mean? So it's that kind of stuff. That's a rhythm for me. I love it. Cool. And with that note, I think we should all get back to doing some art. So I want to thank a yeah, few yeah. people. I want to thank everybody in the audience for joining us and supplying all the really great, insightful questions. And, uh, of course, my co-host, the amazing Jonathan Hardesty, and, of course, yes. the biggest thank you goes to our guest this week, the incredible, also one of my artistic heroes, Mr. Thomas Fluority. Thank you very much, Tom. Yeah, baby. Oh, yeah, thanks, honor, Tom. My man. It's a joy. Such a joy, guys. It was awesome. Yeah, thank you.